Welcome to the first episode of Talking Points with Texabaman. Today is Tuesday, November 1st, and as you can see, we have overcast and cloudy, dreary skies today. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. I think we got an 80% chance, and that'll be a good thing. Because my ground, even though it looks green and everything, there's a lot of cracks hidden up underneath it. And the cracks are pretty deep and getting a little bit wider, so I need some rain to fill them up. Anyway, as you can see, we've got some guests out there. That's, of course, my neighbor across the way's uh, cows. They're out there getting their morning grass. Anyway, folks. I just wanted to talk today about uh, my country experience, basically, as the title goes from my page. Last year, around July or August, we were living in the city. And living out there, it just got to where it was worse and worse and worse and worse. And... <clears throat> My sister gave me a call and said that she was moving to Tennessee and asked me if I would be interested in this place. And I'm like, uh, yeah. And so around August of last year, uh, she moved to Tennessee. We moved in here. And the thing about this place is, is it feels like home, I don't like the city because the city, it just felt like a place to go go home to from work or from shopping and it just it didn't feel like a home. Being out here, even though I have, you know, high grass and weeds and scrub trees and an unfinished fire pit it needs to be finished pretty soon. This feels like home. I do not, and I repeat, I do not like going into the city anymore. If I get, well, when I'm able to drive, and if I have to drive to the city, I dread it. I dread the traffic, I dread the people, and I dread the overcrowding. I mean, yeah, the people in New York, you know, they're packed in there like sardines. And where I was from, it's getting about like that too. And over the last 30, 35 years, it's just gone downhill. I mean, literally downhill. Whenever I was little out there, or when I say little, Whenever I was in my teen teenage years out there, you could walk the streets and be with your friends and you could go around late at night and, you know, not get in and not get into any trouble, not worry about getting shot. Of course, you didn't have to worry about clowns either. And it just, over time, it just went downhill. I mean, literally downhill. And... So being out here, you know, where I'm at has probably less than 2,000 people. I mean, it's like great. And I also wanted to point out the reason that I call myself Texabaman. And that would be because of the fact that my mom is from Texas. My dad was, <clears throat> my dad was from Alabama. And so, you know, I just mix the two, you know, Texas Bamman, because I feel, you know, at home in Texas. And the last time I was out in Alabama, which was back in the eighties, it felt like home too. And, I mean, my dad, he was a hillbilly from Alabama. I mean, like deep woods, pure hillbilly. He used to run shine. He used to 
you know, pick cotton. I mean, he basically did it all when he was, you know, growing up out there. He told me he didn't have his first pair of, sh pair of shoes until he was like after five years old. And, you know, that right there tells me how hard it was back then in, you know, in the country life. And I'll just say this, and I might break, I might, my voice might crack even more than it is now because I'm not used to talking on, you know, doing, I'm not used to doing this basically. My dad's gone now. He passed away August 7th of this year. What happened was he had a double stroke. It caused brain damage to four parts of his brain and there was no coming back from it. The thing about it is I miss my dad. I mean, my dad never got to see this place. I wish he would have, because I think he would have loved it. I think he may have seen a few pictures of my chickens that I had when I first got here. But honestly, I, I mean, it's been so long, I don't even remember now. <clears throat> But what happened was he was sitting on his porch one morning, July 29th. I was at work. I had gotten I'd gotten laid off back in the first part of July. My job called me back about July the 20 something, I went back to work July 28th. I went to orientation for the new position. The 29th, they called me. I mean, my sister called me, told me that my dad was in the hospital. He wasn't opening his eyes and he had quit breathing. And I told my HR lady, I told her, they just told me to go take care of it, you know, and she's very understanding, and, you know, that's, that's what I love about the company that, you know, I'm hopefully fixing to go back to work for again, because it's like family up there, but anyway, I found out he had Went out that morning, got his cup of coffee, and my stepmom came out to the porch, and he was sitting in his chair with his head tilted back, non-communicative, non basically, he wasn't able to respond to anything. And she called, either she called or one of my dad's neighbors called to the EMTs and they came out and he was still unresponsive. Don't know how long it had been that he'd been like that because my stepmother had been in the shower and she came out right after she got out of the shower and we found him. He had his uh, coffee mug with him. I don't know if it was an Alabama coffee mug or the world's greatest grandpa coffee mug or world's greatest dad coffee mug. I mean, he had a favorite mug that I'm trying to remember what it said on it, but I mean, that was, I know that was his favorite. Anyway, that day, my brother-in-law, I still consider him my brother-in-law, even though he's my ex-wife's brother. He's still my brother-in-law to me. He gave me a ride out there to the hospital where my dad was. 
and I got there and it was just like I it's hard to explain he was in the hospital bed not moving a muscle had the breathing tubes down him and he wouldn't wake up I did not leave my dad's side for that whole uh, I did not leave my dad's side until the following Friday I stayed up there an entire week I refused to leave because that's my father and I wanted him to wake up so bad I just wanted him to see me one more time and you know look at me and I wanted to tell him how good you know things were how good I was doing and you know before I got laid off July 8th of this year I was working two jobs seven days a week and I enjoyed every bit of it my daughter she was working her job every weekend you know and we were doing we were doing what we were unable to do in the city and we were having fun with it we were you know enjoying it we were catching up on our bills we were you know almost getting ahead and my dad would have been proud I mean I know he would have been proud so anyway me my little brother my two younger stepsisters and my stepmother you know we had to make that decision whether to pull him from life support or you know leave him on life support and my dad with him being a hillbilly from Alabama there used to be a tough old hillbilly from Alabama we knew all of us that my dad wouldn't have wanted to stay you know on machines and being unresponsive and not being able to do anything I'll tell you right now and I ain't lying you know I'm the oldest son and it tore me up literally because I mean there again that was my father to have to make to have to go along with that decision because I just wanted my dad I wanted to keep him around but it wasn't in God's plan and he was 73 years old and there again you know I fought with the doctors I wanted second opinions I wanted anything to give me a glimmer of hope that I was going to get my dad back well truth be told my dad while he was in there just deteriorated you know with the damage in his brain there was no coming back from it I understand we live in the 21st century that was what I was ho holding on to I was holding on to the hopefully the technology would be there to fix him I'm not saying that we do have the technology to be able to fix brain damage I'm not saying we do I'm not saying we don't I'm saying I wish my dad had had it because if he had I still have him but there again it's not my will it's God's will so anyway that's following Sunday after I came home or that Sunday after I came home I came home the following Friday after he went in everyone told me to go home get some rest go home get some rest I did that fall on Sunday he uh, passed away got a call from my brother 
and he told me dad was gone. That's the first time I think I've heard my brother cry. And my brother, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, my brother is about as tough as my dad. But the thing about my brother is, even though me and my little brother, we were raised hunting and fishing, my little brother still loves the city. So we both take after my dad. I love the country. I love the hunting and the fishing, even though I don't get to do much anymore. But my brother, he loves the city, and he loves the hunting and fishing. So we both are our father's son. Anyway, people, that's today's uh, talking points with Texas. Texas Bandman, I'm sorry. I'm getting broken up here. And I was just wanted to let y'all in on that story about my father. And I want to thank y'all for the wishes for my nephew Dylan. I think he's going to pull through great 100%. And thank y'all so much. Anyway, y'all take care. There again, I'm going to start doing these every Tuesday. And hopefully not, you know, break down in tears like I just did. And, you know, thanks for watching. And before we go, don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the thumbs down button. Whether you like or dislike the video. If y'all can think of anything that y'all want me to do video of or talk about let me know in the comments if y'all hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the little bell to go with it for notifications also if you want to if you want to add me as a friend on facebook it's facebook.com forward slash texa t-e-x-a dot bamman b-a-m-a-n and also if you want to help support the channel in one or two ways you can go to my patreon page at patreon.com forward slash texabamon or if you can look to the right of your screen there should be a, a uh, support button it's either to the right of your screen or it's in the about section of my page one of the two you can donate that way i'm still trying to get funds together to get internet instead of using my cell phone but anyway folks this has been talking points with texas bamman for tuesday november 1st 2016 y'all take care god bless and have a good one